Well, I got an, a question about my sled recently, and I figured I would do a vid video on it. <clears throat> it's just going to be a short video. This is my uh, main crosscut sled that I use every day. And as you can see, this thing looks like it's been through hell and back, and it has. This thing's been modified, and it's been used for a long time. I started out with um, basically a smaller scale sled um, and I figured, you know, that would be great. But in the reality hit me when you do big cabinet jobs, uh, having a small sled just doesn't really work. You know, a, a sled, let's just say that is, you know, something that you typically see, you know, on a lot of um, people's videos or magazines, TV shows, they'll often have pictures and plans to build sleds, but the sleds are so puny. Well, when I first started, that's what I did. I basically took, um, I took a look at some of those that I saw on, you know, TV or magazines or something. And I, I just thought, oh, I'm going to build some. So I built one, you know, it was little, thing basically was, you know, big enough for maybe 19, maybe 20 inches. Um, and it didn't have any width to it. That was another factor that was an issue. So whenever you are working with sheet goods, I feel like you need to have support. So if you're working with eight foot long sheets, as I do, you need to have support. So this is 60 inches long. So this piece is a is a um, five eighths Baltic birch, and it's got a quarter inch hardboard cover, and um, that actually might be eighth inch. I I take that back. I think it's eighth inch. the The hardboard cover was my um, surface that I had in my first one of my first workshops. I had this all over. So I had um, plywood or MDF for the base of my counters and work work uh, surfaces. And then I covered it with hardboard, this stuff. And it was great because you could just take it off and just get rid of it if you needed to, um, you know, screwed on. So I thought, well, I'm gonna cover my sled with this stuff because it's um, very durable. It's slippery, so I I, uh, I can wax stuff. It slides nicely, um, so you can you can have a nice surface with this stuff. And the other thought was that if you ever needed to replace it, you could just unscrew it and put a new piece on. And that was uh, something that I thought I would do all the time, right? Because you change blades, and you know you're going to have a bigger curve here. And eventually it's going to be so big that you're going to want to change it or replace it. Well, honestly, this is the least of the worry, right? This is the least of the, my concerns, the, the curve, because um, when you cut with good blades, you really don't need zero clearance. And I, I'm, I'm just speaking frankly. It's fancy and, it, you know, you think, oh, it's cool. It's going to have the best, you know, tear out free cuts. Your blades are going to give you the tear out free cuts. I don't, I don't think that the zero clearance insert is going to do that. It may help a little bit if you have inferior blades, especially, but I don't know as though it really matters. So this piece, although this has the removable uh, insert, I actually did it just on this one side, right? Because I felt like on the right side, that's the side that's always a constant it pretty much never changes. It's the left side that does. So if you go from a thin curve, it shrinks on the left, stays act, stays on the right. So that's always a constant. I figured, well, who cares about the right side? We'll only change the left. So I actually have a split piece here. So it allows me to just change this section here. It's a brilliant idea, okay? So um, one of the things that I didn't account for was the fact that this material, although you would think would be a standard issue uh, material to buy, my local box store, I used to get this at um, Home Depot, 
they don't carry this anymore. They used to all day long. I could go in and I mean, I have my cabinets for my um, shop. You can see all that stuff. They're all made with the quarter inch hardboard. Well, this is eighth inch and they just don't have this the same way they used to. So what happens is if you go to buy this right now and try to fit it in here and a as a replacement, you're not going to be able to get it. That's going to be the same thickness. It's going to be different. So unfortunately, um, getting this to look the same is kind of a nuisance. It's, it just doesn't really. So then you're going to have this big stripe of a different wood and it's probably going to be a different thickness and all that stuff. So at some point in time, I just said, forget about it. Well, this kerf is pretty big, right? It's as big as uh, you probably, well, I mean, it's it's a standard eighth inch kerf, but probably a little bit bigger after a while. You know, you get a little play in your slides. You get a little movement in your slides. The um, groove tends to get a little bit bigger. So that's going to change over time. So this slot's probably changed a bit. But I don't really care about the um, the size of it anymore. And I'll be frank, this is something that I'm going to say. Um, if you have a zero clearance insert, like a um, throat plate or whatever, it actually reduces your dust collection as well. So having this bigger slot here actually provides better dust clearance and it actually does a better job. The same thing goes with your throat plates. Um, if you have a throat plate on your uh, table saw, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. These throw plates are invaluable, right? Everybody knows this. Um, they're safer. They, um, you know, they won't allow small objects to slide in there. So obviously these are a nice feature. However, when it comes to dust collection, they aren't great. Um, the dust tends to bounce off essentially. And unless you have an overhead guard like this one pulling the dust, you're going to get some nasty um, dust. So what I do, and I think this is a pretty common thing for um, a lot of shops to do, is I actually make holes for the dust, the collection, actually to work better. And this, the one that's down there as well on my saw right now has the same feature. Um, but it's, it's the, the same concept is with this slot. As it gets a little bit bigger, it actually allows to pull a little bit better. Um, so that is a, that's a feature that I feel like having, having a replaceable insert that you can move towards um, the blade and always have it right there. I just don't think that's an important feature um, to have. So if I were to design another um, sled, which I'm going to be building another one at some point here soon, um, this is, <clears throat> this is going on uh, I think about 18 years this has been um, in this essential state. So I'm probably going to be changing it out. Um, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be having a removable piece here. I think I'm just going to go straight um, 5 8 ultralight MDF. And um, the reason I'm not going to use the Baltic birch, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use the Baltic birch, it's because it's heavy. And the, the um, ultralight MDF, um, I have those sheets all the time. They are light. When you build something like this, this is a pretty big piece and this is actually fairly heavy. Uh, this guy here is, uh, let me show you here. I can cut 29 inches the way that it is right now. And that's actually been reduced because I put those, um, these backers here so I put those on and actually there's two on there right now so if I remove those two I would be at um, almost 29 and three quarters for that or 29 and a half would be my max cut right there you can see that now that would be border I mean you're going right up to the end there and obviously that's not so great but I I do it and it works but um, it's not so perfect um, but it is it's definitely doable so 29 inches as it sits right now and that's a great size uh, i can cut most you know 
most anything I need to, I can cut. Uh, I do have another one up here. That is one that I don't use for just anything. Um, this is actually only used for uh, frameless jobs where, the, where I'm edge banding. And I need the top and bottom to be absolutely 100% chip out free. So I only use it with a very specific blade and uh, I, I don't deviate from it. So the uh, kerf on it, I mean, it's only been used with uh, one blade and it never changes. And it's, and it's just dead on. Uh, but I can also cut 31 and three quarters with this guy. So um, this is made with three quarter inch plywood, as you can see, maple ply. And this is uh, eight quarter maple. So um, the, the, obviously the fence is eight quarter maple and it's about three inches tall. The um, back fence up there is a little bit weird. It was actually a cut off from a project. So it was kind of funny. Uh, it's curved a little bit. Again, these are all things that um, you can, you know, use scraps or whatever you have in the shop, pretty much. That's my thinking anyways. Um, but, you know, this particular project, I'm sure, came from scrap piece of uh, Baltic birch that I had. And um, I would honestly say if I were to build it again, I would not use Baltic birch. It's just too heavy. I would use um, for the flatness, um, for the lightness, I would use ultralight MDF and um, maybe three quarter inch, maybe five eighths, whatever, maybe half inch, but I definitely wouldn't be using the Baltic birch. It's just too heavy. And then you put the hardboard on it and it just adds more weight. Then you put the fence on it. I mean, before you know it. So somebody asked, um, for like close-ups of my fence and whatnot. And I'm going to show you, um, my back fence is a little unusual, right? It's a little unorthodox. The reason it's unorthodox is because I used to have a full bar back piece, the same as the front piece. And, um, I think ultimately when I built it, it was great. But when I needed to store it on the, the wall, there was, there was a reason why I, I needed to notch it because I wanted to uh, make room for something. So I actually notched this to, to account for something I was hanging on the wall. So I did it on both sides, but I left the meat there so that I could still have that 29 and a half inch max cut. Um, and then what I did was I actually took this piece. Um, it originally was in front just a little bit. I moved it and you can see that by looking on the side there. It's actually, see how it's set back? That's so I could get, get a little bit more distance. That's about another inch right there. So I gain more, more depth of cut by just moving this piece back. Now this is the one nice thing about Baltic birch, I will say is that, um, or any plywood, but Baltic birch is definitely very good, um, is that the screw holding ability of it is very good. So if you have screws, like for instance, this is, um, you know, going in there, and of course you've got the the miter, the, the, the uh, tracks or whatever that go into the miter slot, um, those are screwed up into this Baltic birch and it's nice to have that holding ability. So there's definitely some um, pros that go with the plywood, and that's definitely one of them. This particular piece is literally uh, cantilevering off of this the back edge, and it's, I mean, it is so strong. You can't, you know, it'll bend the plywood before this thing moves, and this piece of uh, maple is absolutely stout, so um, it's pretty cool. Now, I've had over the, the years, different places to hang it. And um, right now, you know, the, the way I hang it is definitely gonna be different than the way I used to hang it. So I have different holes for different mounting um, locations at different shops in my career. So this thing's gone from lots of different shops and uh, who knows, you know, how many places I, I hung, I hang this thing or hung it in uh, my career, but it's pretty crazy. But um, also you'll note this guy's got a notch in it. Now that notch is 
so that I could drop my um, overhead guard down. Oh. Okay, so you can see my guard comes down. Now, if I didn't have that notched, that's about as, you know, that's where I would be. So you can see the advantage of having that notch. I can drop it down. Now, I can't drop it that low because once it comes up here, it'll hit the front of my sled, but I can get pretty close. Now, let me show you what I mean. So you can see right there, and being that it's rounded, if I kept pushing, this piece is just gonna lift up and it's gonna go over my fence. So it would theoretically work, but you know, the reality of it is I don't want it hitting as I'm working. I don't want that uh, bump because it might you know, interfere with a good smooth cut. So I just raise it up just enough to um, give me, a little hard to push this with one arm, but um, so I just kind of push it down to where it's bottomed out on my fence and it works great. Now, as I pull this thing back, you can see how it just clears that back piece there. Now, what's also nice about this is that if I move this, now this um, guard can go a little more to the left than center of the blade. So if I move it all the way to the left, I don't have the same visibility, but this is another thing that's awesome, but it's hard to move with one hand. Let me show you what it, if I come down, I can actually see, it's gonna be impossible for you to see that, but I can actually see the cut line from straight above this thing. I can actually see through here. Um, and it's a, it's a weird phenomenon, but it actually gives me a really good um, view of my cut line. So when I'm cutting, you know, whatever it is I'm cutting, I can actually see it as it hits the kerf. It's really remarkable. And I guess it's because I have, my eyes are wider. They're right here and I can see, and it, it just goes down and it's pretty cool. So um, kind of like binoculars, I guess. It's a little bit like that, but uh, okay. Well, yeah, so this works great with this in conjunction. Now I have thought about getting that, that um, saw stash, that stuff that uh, fast cap sells in order to put on here. Um, basically it's like a little broom material um, with bristles that block the dust. And the reason I was thinking about getting that is so that I can actually have it hang down. And then when I go over my fence, it'll just, you know, it'll just go over the fence, but I still get that dust collection. Um, Cause it, when you use this, it's not as good with the dust collection um, that you would obviously get with the normal table saw use, which is basically a hundred percent top, you know, top uh, surface dust or chips. Um, okay, now, um, so these are just mounted uh, with screws from underneath, just, you know, two inch wood screws or whatever, one, inch and a half inch wood screws. Um, and these, the same thing with this, it's just mounted into wood, you know, wood screws are just mounted from underneath. It's, it's nothing fancy. Um, you know, if you want to know how tall the fence is, let me show you. Two and three quarter inches. Two and three quarter. Now, here's the kicker. This piece here goes in a groove, right? You can see that groove. That groove is, is necessary for the um, that little uh, T. It's like T molding going into a piece of wood. Well, that T goes in there and it keeps this piece nice and stable. It's really bizarre uh, how it works, but it does actually work pretty well. Um, but when you put it in there, it drops so low that you actually hit it when you take your blade up. Um, so this particular, um, you know, saw cuts three and an eighth inches high. When you put it on the sled, obviously it's going to drop by the thickness of your sled, whatever that is. And, um, but you'll cut right through this aluminum. Now the aluminum is soft, obviously it's not going to hurt it, but you know, it's something to think about. 
Um, another th thing you'll notice is that my tape on here, it's not really very good. Um, there's, there's a couple reasons for that. It's, one is that I don't use it. Um, and I don't even know why I ever put it on because this, uh, the tape to me is just useless on a miter uh, sled. So if you had a really good scale on here and you had a really good stop that actually, um, utilized maybe a, a, a crosshair kind of like, you know, your, your table saw does, you see how nice that is. If you had a really good one, then I guess that would be useful. But because these, you can see here, where do you put the tape measure for these? Um, it, it's kind of a, it's, um, it puzzles me a little bit. One would think you would put it right here, right? So then I, 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 would, I would lock it down and you can see that that's going to give you a you know a pretty accurate you know if you wanted to make a 24 and a half inch cut I could probably make it right there and I'm sure that that would be reasonably close right 24 and a half um, so yeah you could get rough measurements with this but when you go anything finer like a 32nd or a 64th or you know even just getting that measurement um, it may be very very coarse. So I have found that it, they're basically a waste of time. Uh, it's much better to use um, just a regular tape measure, come to the kerf and line up the kerf with the, the mark that you use from your tape measure and um, hold it, put the stop in, lock it down, and then just repeat that. So I have pretty much, did, I don't know, this probably would come off if I peeled it off, but I haven't tried. Um, so, uh, I, cause I did ultimately, I, initially I had it here all the way. I can see the residue and it went to the, this side of it also, but, um, you know, it didn't, uh, work for me. So I probably got rid of it. And I think originally I actually had this shifted to the left more. So, um, this piece was actually covering, I don't know if you can, you can see this, but uh, this piece here, you see how it overhangs to the right? Well, that's to get more um, length to the right. So as soon as I built this, I realized my max width of cut to the right was way more important than my, my cut to the left with the stop block because I never put my stop here, ever, not one time. But I always put it here, right? So I take a full sheet of plywood, right? Four by eight or whatever I'm using all the way out to the left side. And now I've got this whole big piece here and square it up. And now I come to the right. So where in this operation would I ever put it on the left side? I don't. So this part here is completely wasted for me. I would love to take this and move it to the right, right? You could get more um, locking ability with your with your um, stops here. I would be able to push it over here a little bit more. Um, but that is something that um, I have in the past figured, you know, I went with the new one, I would probably change just the way that it's designed. Um, I definitely want the fence to be this long. Uh, actually, I might even change it to, to make it the full length. I really like the width of this cutting ability. The reason I say that is because this can cut a um, lower kitchen cabinet, base cabinets, and um, pretty much every job I do is right about that 36 mark. So if I'm doing a cabinet that's 36 inches, I can utilize this stop. So this will give me um, over 36 inches of cut right here. And I can go, I can go beyond that as long as I've, I have the um, locking, um, device, the swinging device right there. See how it, it, it does that if it, if it comes off of here. Um, so you, just as long as you have that a little bit on that wood, it'll, it'll be good to go because I'm actually locking it down here, not here. So this gives me about 36 and a half or 36 and three quarters or something. And then anything beyond that, I um, switch to my stop block here, which is great because I can go here 
right? So if I bump this up to that, it's registering at almost 38 inches. This is a one inch block, obviously. So we take the fence and move it over. Um, we're, we're basically taking away an inch right here of, of uh, space. So that number right there is about 37 inches, um, which is about maximum cut there. So yeah, this is a great feature. I love the length of this. Um, I probably would, the new, the new one's gonna have a, a little bit longer uh, fence so it can come all the way out here uh, because you can see here, this was an add-on, this is a modification. So I took this piece, I took the straight edge piece that um, those two quarter inch guys right there and I basically added it on and glued it on to this guy so it's a continuation. So when you push hard, it doesn't deflect, right? It's, it's rock solid. If you didn't have that there, it would uh, fling all around. And I did the same here as well. So I wanted the maximum length on these. That's one thing I notice for sure on a sled is that you want the max support you can get. And not only does this fence need to be dead straight, need to be dead flat, this thing, it needs to be long. Unless you're working with really small pieces, these things need to be long and they need to be heavy uh, to support all the weight that you're going to be pushing on these things. So you want these things to be sturdy. Um, I'm talking about the fences. You want these things to be nice and sturdy and, um, you know, basically it'd be as solid as possible. So that's why I chose um, maple and or poplar. Uh, this piece here is maple. I know some of them have been poplar in the past, but this guy's maple. And um, I don't know if you can tell, there's actually a, a light mark here. That was actually for an extension that I had had, and it went all the way out to um, basically eight feet <laughs> and went out there as well. So I used to have a big extension. I don't use that anymore, but it was kind of kind of cool. Um, I could slide it out and I put a little stop on it. But again, I don't cut out to the left anymore. Um, and everybody's going to be different, right? Some people are going to want to cut to the left. Some people are going to want to cut to the right. It's just all about what you do. Um, but because the rip fence are generally on the right side, to me, that's kind of a no-brainer. Like, that's the side you're going to be milling mostly from. The only time you use the left is when you're squaring up that panel. Um, okay, so one other thing I have is um, this guy here. And this is for my longer... Um, support so if I'm cutting long pieces I just have that for support and it, it's literally the easiest thing in the world to build I just put a piece of sandpaper under it see that guy right there and that just keeps it from sliding um, typically when you have weight on this thing it doesn't slide uh, backwards here I'm keeping it from sliding that way right as you make the cut and then here it pushes it this way, but that piece of sandpaper really does a great job. Uh, this thing doesn't move at all. So, plus I put um, wax and also um, my silicone, I mean, not my silicone, my um, Teflon or whatever it's called, lube, uh, my favorite uh, lubricant, you've seen that. And um, yeah, so that's really cool. Um, and it's just the same material. And it's got, obviously, it's, it, everything is exactly the same. What else? Um, the, the runners are um, Rockler. I used to have wooden ones, and those were great, but I decided to get the, um, the, the metal aluminum ones from Rockler. And um, I, I don't know, they're okay, T to be clear. They're not like the best things in the world. I, the, um, I was having a problem with the runners with humidity and all that stuff. So if I were to do a homemade one, um, I would probably try to use some sort of a stable material versus a uh, hardwood because hardwood does move a lot. And when you're, um, you know, the humidity and, and everything. So you'll come out one day and, and your sled will have slop in it. You're like, what happened? The next day, tight. So um, that's kind of a tough one when you have so many changes in humidity and dryness where you are um, as we do. 
So um, we don't live in a very humid area, but uh, it can be really dry, like 5% humidity, 4%. And when that happens, it's amazing how much stuff shrinks. Uh, even my inserts, um, throat plate inserts, these guys shrink a lot. So I'm constantly having to change um, tape on them. That's why I have these guys, um, they're screws on the sides in order to accommodate the uh, changes in humidity. I'll just take a, you know, a quarter turn or whatever, an eighth of a turn. All it takes is a tiny bit and it locks it right in. So um, that's really cool. But uh, this is a, not too long ago, I added this piece um, because I was tired of messing with my tape measures. And this was a really cool, you know, easy little add-on. And I'll tell you what, you know, it's, it's worth its weight in gold right there. It just hangs in and doesn't, uh, I can push this. You can see how it is above the table saw and it doesn't interfere as I move these. These things right here can be uh, moved over this so it doesn't interfere. Works great. This is another thing that I added on after I built it. Um, this probably was a couple years ago. I changed this. I didn't used to have this. Uh, this is an important part. I think this is definitely something I, I should have done from day one because it's great for dust collection, but it's also great for safety. Um, the blade doesn't exit out. So definitely something that uh, it's really easy to do. I just stacked a bunch of pieces of, um, this is a one inch or inch and a quarter ultralight. And I just ganged them up and I just glued and glued and glued. And eventually I had a big block that I was able to glue onto this and it's just one big thing and I you know made it round and eased everything so it's completely soft so there's no sharp corners that are going to hurt and now I can just use it as a you know basically it, it helps me move this thing if I want to with just one hand and it's great but you know very rarely would I feed it like this but I, it does give me the ability to do that um, so anyways this is definitely a sweet um, miter sled and uh, cross-cutting sled, I should say. However, the other day I did have to make some angled cuts. And uh, I think you can see the actual uh, writing on the sled. These guys here basically are angles. And I used my cabinet squares, assembly squares, to um, cut my... 45 degree cuts. So this is a really cool thing. I just screwed right there and I made these guys a little bit big, these holes, so that I could adjust it, just make it absolutely perfect. Um, the throat, I wanted to make sure that the, um, this part, the kerf was in the right spot. So I just made these holes a little bit big so I can adjust the width on these. But once you do that, man, that thing is nice. So I was able to make these really nice um, 45 degree cuts with just using these, it's so simple. They work great. But, um, okay, well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that might be uh, useful for somebody trying to build one of these. I don't know. Uh, I think it's uh, important to have. Um, so this this guy right here, uh, like I said, I'm cutting, you know, 29 and a half inches max. And um, it's it's an absolute beast, this thing. So the other one, like I said, cuts about 30, almost 32 inches. So it's a little bit bigger and, but it doesn't have any kind of a, um, it doesn't have any kind of a, uh, track on it. So I can't put stops on it, but I just do manual stops on that guy. And, uh, and it's, and it's fine. This one, I use these tracks all the time. They're not perfect, but you know what? They're really good. And I love the fact that they flip out of the way. Um, you know, absolutely, it works pretty well. So I would encourage anybody to um, build one of these. And if you'd like to see a build video, I think I'm gonna have to build one uh, of these, one of these days, as soon as I get some time. Um, I've just got so many jobs backed up and, you know, you get around Thanksgiving, Christmas, and it's just, uh, especially with this COVID year, everything is just slammed. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I gotta be very, very thankful for everything that uh, 
I've worked hard for my business, but I'm very grateful for everything that I have. And I'm so thankful that I have tons of work. Um, and this is this new uh, YouTube venture. You know, I started really about six months ago, eight months ago. Um, I know I posted a video or maybe a few videos um, in 2019, but didn't really do anything, you know, um, since then. But the last like, you know, six, eight, about six months or so, I've been really trying to put out my videos. I have lots of video footage. Um, pretty much every job that I do, I, I do videos of. And so I've got so much footage of stuff. So I've got, um, you know, you name it, uh, a lot of videos of builds. So um, I'm slowly getting those out. Um, but this, this is definitely something that I feel like if you're, you know, wanting to do a, um, a miter or a cross cutting sled and you know, you, maybe you just find this helpful. I'm just trying to help, um, you know, however I can and, uh, grow my channel. Obviously that's the goal to grow the channel and, um, you know, have a following. So if you haven't already do me a favor and subscribe, um, to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Also, um, thumbs up the video and comment. Let me know how you, you know, what you're thinking about things as far as, you know, what I'm showing you on the channel. I'm trying to do as much detailed footage as I can. I know it's really hard when I'm doing videos of builds because it takes so long to do uh, jobs. And when you, when you have hours and hours and hours of footage, it's hard to narrow it down. So even this video of a, of a cross cut sled, I'm, I've been videoing for 38 minutes right now. So even just doing this takes a while. Um, okay. Well, let me know if there's any questions, um, and I'd be happy to help answer them or whatever. Um, and again, I really appreciate the support for everybody who's watched my channel. And again, please subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. Um, I have a lot of really cool things in my shop as well that I would love to show you guys, uh, anybody who's out there wanting to know how things work and, you know, maybe even this particular table, how things work in here um, from a day-to-day -day standpoint, sanding, routing, um, whatever it may be. Because this could be one shop right here. If somebody just had uh, this space, you could do anything with this space. Um, it's just a what it literally, this would take almost everything that you would need to do in a shop to build stuff you could do with this completely and you would absolutely uh this would be a great asset for anybody to have so um all right well thanks again for watching and let me know all right bye bye